Hey everybody, um, back here in the shop and um, I'm on the electro fishing boat to uh, get you guys some familiarity uh, with the e-boat. We're going to go over the parts a little bit. I'm actually sitting in the captain's chair right now and we're going to go over the parts of uh, an electro fishing boat. There, um, most electro fishing boats are set up virtually the same way. There are some uh, differences, but fundamentally most um, e-boats work similarly. So we're gonna take a look at it today and hopefully get you guys some experience with the e-boat. All right, most e-boats are the same and they kind of look like the, um, this is sort of uh, the captain's chair, right? And it kind of is a little bit daunting until you kind of understand what's going on here. Um, basically what you have down or up here is these are all the high voltage controls, okay? And basically everything down here, here's your, um, um, most of this is your console power. This is the console, right? Um, gas gauge, um, your, this is your engine, um, um, you know, battery condition. This is your generator, how to turn the generator on and off, big rocker switch right there. Um, and then most of this down here, this is all low voltage stuff like your navigation lights, your dash lights, your fuel gauge, your spare battery, your work deck switches. We'll get to that in a minute. And then over here, you have a lot of your, um, your low voltage work lights and your headlights. Basically, this is the, th these are the light mechanisms, boat horn, right? It's the, this is not on right now. Another spare battery charging and then down here is basically all of the little breakers right for all of your lights uh, backup lights tank pump lights um, basically this is all of your protection down here rather than fuses most modern electro fishing boats um, actually have a, um, a set of breakers instead of actual fuses now um, older boats will have more fuses um, than they do breakers. Let's take a look under the hood here. So this is the seat in most um, most electric fishing boats. The uh, under the seat is the generator, and this uh, is a, a Smith root boat. So this generator is made by uh, Kohler. It's a marine generator that's meant to go on actually a bigger boat, and this whole thing is a 7.5 GPP, uh, which means it puts out uh, roughly uh, 7,500 watts. So this whole thing is capable of doing that. And this is a pretty cool system right here, right? We've got the motor, and then over here we have essentially um, like uh, the radiator in your car, with antifreeze that will go in here. And then this is actually a water jacket. So that means that this whole generator is actually cooled by water that is drawn in from um, the outside. And so this is a water-cooled Kohler marine generator that is specially wound for this boat and the controls to turn it on are actually right over here. Okay, we're up here on the electro fishing boat i'm standing on the deck here and i'm looking back toward the helm stand right we were just right there this is the live well uh, holds about 100 gallons and then let's take a look at the other side of the helm stand here um, basically we have um, a bunch of breakers right here right that controls uh, the generator fan the lights the engine light uh, and then here are some main breakers, right? These are 50 amp breakers right here. And then what I want you to pay attention to in here, uh, we've got some uh, plastic connectors, right? Cathode array, boat ground, cathode, cathode, port boom, starboard boom, anode, anode. So this is interesting, right? The anode is the positive and the cathode is the negative, right? So this is a very important thing to understand. In other words, what are the electrodes on the boat? And these um, big hotshot poles are actually the anode and they'll swing off the front of the boat and I'll show you the anode array in a minute. And then up here in the front, these wires 
hanging down, you see those droppers that go down? Those are the cathode. And most boats have the ability to change the cathode. Um, in other words, could you run the boat as the cathode or could you run an external cathode array? See, cathode array. So one of the things that you want to think about when you get on an electrofishing boat is, is the boat hull the cathode? Uh, that's really important because if you reach out and you touch, essentially you touch the water and you're in the boat, then you could get shocked. So really important to know when you get on an electrofishing boat, is the boat the cathode uh, or not? And then there are some uh, foot switches uh, that you can activate right here. In other words, active, inactive. Uh, some of the cool things about electrofishing boats is this is back at the helm stand, right? The operator has a foot switch. And up here on the front, the two netters have a foot switch. And this one needs to be pushed, and this one needs to be pushed. And some boats actually have a selector switch where you can actually turn the, um, the foot pedals on and off, uh, command center foot switch, right? So that you can activate or inactivate the foot switches. So really important to know where your foot switches, uh, the settings are on your um, electrofish. All right, back up here on the helm stand again. Um, what are some uh, common settings that um, you think that we should be electrofishing with, right? So once you have your generator um, turned on, um, then what do you fish with, right? So here's the main. This is a big uh, monster main switch, right? It's here in the off position. This would be direct current or DC current, and over here would be AC current. We always want to fish around here with DC current or direct current. AC current or alternating current um, is really hard on fish and um, around here generally we don't fish with AC current because it causes a lot of um, violent muscular contractions and tetany. Here's our time. The last time we electrofished it was uh, a 1669 seconds. So I just pushed it and went to zero. This is your emergency off switch. This one shuts down the whole operation, right? It's basically another main. And then output current. This is where my amperage will appear. And then these are my settings. Now, one thing you see a mechanical switch like this, you never want to switch a mechanical switch like this while you have power in the water. And what are the settings here, right? This is a high voltage. This is DC current. This is AC current, DC current, AC current. I always like to start over on the low voltage side in modestly conductivity water. Uh, this 340 may be enough. If we're down in the Hudson, we may have to pump it up. Generally, this um, high voltage indicator right here, and then a percent power. This is a rheostat, right? Now, this one you can turn while there's power in the water to fine tune your amperage. Now, how much power can you put in the water, right? It's got a little cheat sheet chart right on here for you. We're going to be on the DC side. Um, and usually we're going to start off with most electrofishing surveys around here, uh, 60 pulses per second of DC current. All right, that's generally where we fish, 60 DC. So that's 60 pulses per second of direct current. And so if you go over here, we're going to be 60 pulses per second. And let's say we were fishing at 340, which is where I was over here, right? 340. Um, 340 on the DC side at 60 pulses per second, 18 amps. So this gauge right here would read about 18 amps. So if I put power in the water, right, the generator's running, and this went up to like 20, I would be whoa, 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 and the, the generator would bog down, right? And then you would want to step it down. You would, um, you would not be doing yourself um, uh, any good at all. Uh, to be fishing above what this recommended chart says. So generally, we're going to be in this 12, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 18 amps in modestly conductive water around here. This is essentially where we're going to be fishing with most inland lakes around here. Also really important to uh, have some safety system or a little toolkit on board, right? 
Uh, we've got a first aid kit here. We've got some rope, some tape, screwdrivers, uh, some nuts and bolts, some Allen wrenches. Um, really important. Um, here's some uh, marine putty, right, in case you get a hole in the boat. Got an X-Acto knife, some scale envelopes, a hammer, a uh, socket set. And then um, inside here, we've got even more things, right? We've got a first aid kit in here and a fire extinguisher. Um, and then there are some directions as to how the boat works. Hey everybody, we're still here in the shop taking a look at the Electra Fishing Boat. Uh, a couple of things up here in the front that I was talking about earlier. Um, here are our droppers, right? These are your uh, cathodes. And remember I showed you back in the console there that uh, uh, back inside of there, there was a uh, spot where you could actually change uh, from these over to the hull of the boat. And then um, over here, these are our, um, these are our anodes, these droppers. They're like a, they're like an umbrella rig, right? What you do is you take this big thumb screw nut and you, um, uh, you know, open them up essentially like, like an umbrella. Uh, push this down and it opens up and it's on the end of epoxy pole, right? Which is connected to, um, this would be the uh, starboard and this would be the port side, right? There's the port side one right there. I don't have that one out for you yet, but it's just along the side of the boat. And you see we've got these, um, um, basically this waterproof connector. So inside of the console there, right, we had basically the port boom and the starboard boom. And basically this is the power to go to, this would be the port boom, and that would be the starboard boom. Uh, one question I get asked often is how far apart they should be. Um, right around six or seven or maybe even eight feet. Essentially, you wanna make the boom move right along. If you were to take the line of the boat and continue out the side, right, you want your boom to be essentially even with the side of the boat, and then you'll be okay. Hey everybody, we're out here with a little different electro fishing boat. This is the Blue Goose. Uh, the Blue Goose is a uh, 1971 boat, um, or a 72 boat. And um, the Blue Goose doesn't have a, um, um, in a water-cooled generator. She's just got a regular Honda 5000, and it's got a Type 6A box. It essentially has all of the stuff that the other one, uh, the McWaters has, except uh, basically, all of this down here is high voltage, right? Here's your breaker, here's your amp switch, uh, here's your ability to select uh, how many volts you want, here's that rheostat switch where you can fool around, here's your AC-DC selection, and then all this is like live well controls and um, uh, basically your lights. And um, Blue Goose has a basically a foot switch for uh, a pedal, right, for the captain's chair. And um, then the, uh, basically right now our anodes are up, and then it's got an external cathode array. Basically that's the cathode right there that you bring out, and basically you hook on to the front of the boat on these studs right here. See the studs? This is where your external cathode array uh, gets. So basically, this thing right here, this cathode array, comes out and gets hooked up right, right there. Hey everybody, we're back here in the equipment storage room. Uh, just a quick reminder of some things that you're going to want to have with you when you're out on the stream doing an electrofishing survey or on the e-boat. Uh, you got to have a uh, good pair of uh, waterproof waders, probably some... Uh, some um, heavy duty neoprene, some five mil neoprene, or even rubber or canvas boots. Uh, lightweight waders like these are probably not enough for sure. Um, I've um, electrocuted myself with those before. Uh, some other things that you're gonna wanna have, right lineman's gloves with you that are rated. Uh, that's a 5,000 volt right there, glove. Um, you're also going to want to have a uh, AED, right? Um, and you're going to want to have uh, some non-conductive net handles. This one is made out of 
fiberglass, uh, epoxy poles will also work. So you're gonna wanna have um, protective footwear, protective handwear, an AED, and uh, non-conductive net handles for sure, plus a group safety plan um, before you go in the field.